Hello everyone. We are going to start INR number 28 where we will discuss about the ECG basics. So in ECG basics, first thing we have to remember we are using 12 lead in the ECG. So in that 12 lead we are having 6 limb leads and 6 chest leads. Chest leads are also called as precordial leads which will be uh, ranging from V1 to V6. So V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6 right. 6 limb leads we are using which are unipolar and bipolar leads. Right, unipolar leads are AVR, AVL and AVF. These are augmented leads. And bipolar leads are 1, 2 and 3. So in this what we are doing, we are going to see the electrical axis of the heart. Electrical axis of the heart will be formed by 6 limb leads, remember. So these are 6 limb leads which are, you know, shown in the blue color. So 1, 2, 3 and the augmented leaf, AVF, AVR and AVL. All these are 6 limb leads and limb leads are deciding which plane so they are forming the frontal plane of the body right so this is the frontal plane which is decided by limb leads so that is what we have to remember six limb leads are forming the frontal plane of the electrical axis whereas six precordial leads which are shown in the red v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 so these are precordial leads they will form the they will form the transverse plane so you can see this is the transverse section of the body and they will be forming the transverse plane so these leads are giving idea about the location for example inferior wall you can localize by lead number two three and avf remember lead number two three and avf they will together decide the or they will be giving you idea about the inferior wall of the heart which often we use for diagnosis of myocardial infarction which we'll discuss when time will come right then septal wall septum is shown by the v1 and v2 so remember this v1 and v2 will be showing you about the septum right lateral wall will be shown by lead number one v5 v6 and avl right so lead number one v5 v6 and avl they all will be showing you the lateral wall about the heart right so these are the simple basics about the leads now coming to the ecg paper when we are seeing the ECG paper, first we have to remember that standard ECG paper calibration is usually 25 millimeter per second and 10 millimeter per 1 millivolt, right? So what we are doing in the ECG paper, first we have to remember we are seeing two types of a square. One is the small square, right? And five small squares, five small squares will be forming the one large square, right? So that is what we have to remember in EC. ECG we are seeing one small square and then five small squares will form one large square right and in that vertical axis always remember vertical axis on ECG is for amplitude means voltage so you can see vertical axis is for amplitude or voltage so one small square is equal to 0.1 millivolt remember on vertical axis we are seeing the amplitude and what I said one small square is 0.1 millivolt so if one small square is 0.1 millivolt then what about the large square so large square means 0.1 into 0 0.5 so it will be equal to 0.5 millivolt right so one large square is equal to five small square and five small square is equal to 0.5 millivolt so this is for amplitude when we are seeing the horizontal axis remember on horizontal axis we are measuring time in the seconds time in the seconds or millisecond also right so one small square you can see here one small square is equal to 0 0.04 second remember one small square is 0 0.04 second so what will happen to the large square because they are having five square so large square will be 0 0.04 multiplied by 5 equal to 0.2 second right so one small square is 0 0.04 second or we can also call them as a 40 milliseconds so one large square one large square is made up of five small square that will be equal to 0 0.20 second or 200 millisecond right so this is 0 0.04 or 40 millisecond this is 0.2 second or you can also call them as a 200 millisecond right so this is the electrocardiogram paper which we have to keep in mind when we are going to see the electrocardiogram waveform number one waveform is the p wave right so p wave is formed by atrial depolarization when atria will contract they will give positive deflection and that positive deflection will be shown as a p wave so that is why we say that whenever atria will contract what they will do they will cause positive deflection which will be called as 
P wave, right? So now you understand atrial depolarization is corresponding to P wave formation. QRS complex. Usually QRS complex timing is less than 0.12 second. Right, so yeah, we can see means less than three small boxes. We can say like that also, right? So now how much uh, uh, is this value is 0 0.12 second. So what is QRS complex? This is showing you ventricular depolarization. Remember so this QRS complex is showing you ventricular depolarization, right? So QRS complex is showing you ventricular depolarization. See atria depolarization was P wave. Ventricular depolarization is QRS wave. So where is atrial repolarization? Where is atrial repolarization? Because after depolarization, repolarization should come. So remember that atrial repolarization has been masked by QRS interval. Right? So remember atrial repolarization is masked by this QRS complex. Then comes the T wave. T wave is showing you ventricular repolarization. Remember this T wave is ventricular repolarization. Right, so ventricle is again repolarized. So this repolarization is shown by positive deflection called as T wave. Then we will see the PR interval. What is PR interval? It is a time which is starting from the atrial depolarization. Remember, time is starting from the atrial depolarization. So atrial depolarization is starting from here. So this is the beginning of the P, right? And till what time? Till the beginning of ventricular depolarization so from here to here this is called as pr interval so that is what we are seeing pr interval so what is pr interval it is 0.12 to 0.20 second it is time from the starting of the atrial depolarization to the start of ventricular depolarization so what is the significance of this pr interval pr interval which you are seeing from here from the atrial depolarization means atria is contracting and till the time of ventricular contraction means what is happening what is making ventricle to contract that is the av node conduction right so that is why we will say that pr interval is marker for the conduction through the av node understand so pr interval is showing you conduction through the av node right so this pr interval is conduction through the av node atria is contracting and then they are sending signal for the ventricular contraction so this is av node conduction which is shown by pr interval right what is qt interval qt interval is 0.4 second and it is showing you ventricular depolarization and ventricular repolarization so ventricular depolarization and repolarization see the qt interval is starting from here q to the t from here to here right so this is qt interval so qt interval will be including ventricular depolarization also they will be including ventricular repolarization also right then the, here becomes a new thing that is j point what is j point j means junction so it is a junction between the end of qrs complex and start of st segment so end of the qrs so this is the end of the qrs and start of the st segment right so end of the qrs start of the st segment this is the point which is called as j point right then comes the st segment what is st segment you can see this is the st segment it is isoelectric you can see they are flat flat means there is no conduction of electricity right now at this time so this isoelectric line is representing what it is a time between depolarization and repolarization of the ventricle so okay, you can see that time between depolarization and repolarization of the ventricle so it is a time between repolarization of the ventricle and repolarization so depolarization to repolarization time is called as st segment so basically it is a time when ventricle is contracting right so this is the point we have to remember then comes there is a u wave what is u wave u wave is for purkinje repolarization remember it is for when purkinje fibers are getting repolarized that time this u wave will be formed but this can be also seen in bradycardia or very important hypokalemia so remember hypokalemia u wave is a feature right so these are important point about the waveform now we will see the variations in the wave p wave is having two important variation p pulmonal and p mitral see p pulmonal will be having tall peaked p wave so you see this normally it will be up to this much but now we are seeing the peaked p wave so p pulmonal p for pulmonal p for peaked wave so peaked p wave is seen in pulmonal and mitral mitral will be looking like m 
mitral will be looking like M which we can say notched or bifid and they are broader also. So broad notched or bifid M shaped is called as P mitral. So P pulmonal is peaked P wave which we will see in the right atrial enlargement. Remember this P pulmonal is for right atrial enlargement and P mitral is suggestive of left atrial enlargement. Right. So this is the two important variation about the P wave. Right. Now we will we can also see the ECG where P wave will be absent. So now you can see that baseline is irregular and you cannot see any wave the any way the P wave are there. So these are, there is absence of the P wave which you often see in the atrial fibrillation right so we will discuss of that topic that time we will see that also right there are no p wave absence of the p wave is seen in atrial fibrillation right sometime you will see the pr segment pr interval sorry pr interval in pr interval can be short so now you can see that pr interval is from here to here so this is the normal pr interval but what has happened you can see there is a slurred upstroke of the qrs because of that PR interval has become short right so now we can see that PR, PR interval has become short from here to here so short PR interval you will see in Wolf Parkinson White syndrome right and prolonged PR interval you can see now PR interval has been prolonged so prolongation of PR interval you will see in the hard blocks right pathological Q wave remember it is very important to see the pathological q wave amplitude will be very high in the downward segment so pathological q wave you will see in the previous myocardial infarction remember pathological q wave is seen in previous myocardial infarction as you can see here right st wave elevation you can see q r s and then t wave has been elevated normally it should be going like this right but it has been elevated so st elevation you will see in the myocardial infarction and if you find ST depression like this, so ST depression you will see in the ischemia, myocardial ischemia. And if you are looking at the J wave, right, so Osborne J wave we will see in hypothermia. So now you can see at the J point, at the J point we are seeing the J wave which we see in the hypothermia and they are called as Osborne J wave seen in hypothermia, right. Tall tented T wave, you can see that this is a QRS complex and then we are seeing the tall tented so this is tall tented tall tented t wave which we see in hyperkalemia and when you find when you find there is a c t wave and there is a u wave so u wave is for purkinje fiber uh, depolarization also and that is for hypokalemia also so in hypokalemia also you will be finding u wave right so keep revising this topic for your exam stay tuned next topic we will discuss about the heart ecg only bye bye